But welcome yourselves back to the channel. Ladies and gentlemen, it's your boy JD. I hope you've all had a great day. I hope you've all had a great weekend. In today's video, we'll be discussing two or three topics to close out your Sunday, get ready for Monday, and tackle this week's coming madness. It's going to be great, right? Prepare yourselves. But firstly, in today's video, we'll be taking a look at Disney's teaser of Snow White. Yes, we finally got our first look, and it looks absolutely amazing. No, it looks terrible. Also, we'll be discussing the news that the film has also been delayed until 2025. And then sticking along the line, of Disney South Park have just released a new episode called Joining the Pandaverse where they absolutely destroyed Disney and also an actor that was fired from Disney's Mandalorian for some controversial posts has weighed in on the situation and her tweet boy oh boy is certainly going viral and then finally my beloved football club Arsenal have decided to go uh, extremely woke after their women's football team was branded too white after a squad photo was released and now they're going to embrace diversity clearly over results as the world likes everybody to do right now before we get into these lovely topics if you could make sure to leave a like rating as it really really helps out the video if you're new hit that subscribe button and turn on bell notifications so you never miss a video share this video comment on this video nonetheless ladies and gentlemen let's just get into this one so we finally got our first teaser of what disney's live action remake of snow white is going to look like now it is just a still image but as you can see on your screen right now rachel zagler is surrounded by cgi dwarf surprisingly by the way they're all white which is a big move for disney <laughs> then we can all agree on that one so clearly they all saw the backlash the controversy the criticism and the trouble they were in and still are in and decided to rewrite a few things because as we all know it wasn't actually going to be dwarfs in the first place no it was going to be magical creatures or bandits or whatever they were going to be called on your screen now were the bunch of diverse characters that were leaked who are a few inches taller than your average dwarf you see on the big screen and that alleged set leak in itself really set the tone for this controversy right as well as Rachel Zegler but everybody saw what this film was going to look like what it was going to be and for obvious reasons they hated it now people also seem to think that Rachel Zegler herself had been fired because of baseless rumors and clickbait titles but no as a still image also shows you she is still in the film hey i'd be all for her being removed from the film but as of this point disney have kept her in we also got news that the film has been delayed until 2025 disney's live action snow white delayed until 2025 official first look reveals magical creatures turn back into dwarfs after viral complaints wow who could have seen disney change in something according to variety disney's upcoming live action adaptation of snow white star Rachel Zegler has been delayed one day short of a full calendar year. Previously, the live action reimagining of Disney's classic animated film was set to release on March 22nd, 2024. Reportedly, due to the ongoing, yeah, I'm not going to read all of that out, the Hollywood strikes, all of you know what was going on. According to the Hollywood Reporter, Snow White will instead be released nearly one year later on March 22nd, 2025. Back in July 2023, however, it was revealed that the film would be leaving the idea of the dwarfs behind in favor of seven and magical creatures. Disney said this different approach was to avoid reinforcing stereotypes from the original animated film and that this decision was reached after consulting with members of the dwarfism community. So maybe just maybe this strike in Hollywood has given Disney a lifeline, you know, to rethink a couple of things, rewrite some things, and maybe they might actually just include the print. Is that wishful thinking? Who knows? Because if they did that, that might annoy Rachel Zegler a little too much. Imagine those interviews. But speaking of Rachel Zegler, she has done so much damage to this film because of the interviews she's given and her attitude towards the original story that her just being still in the film is turning a lot of people away they see she's in the film and they don't want anything to do with it i mean even the image we got of the magical creatures the bandits or whatever they were going to be called being removed and they've put the quote-unquote dwarfs back in people still look at that and think it's absolutely terrible and i agree you know brett cooper's snow white knocks this one absolutely out the park and they only just did a trailer and that was what five seconds long of seeing brett cooper as snow white you know they've done more for snow white than disney has and they still think they're going to get away with changing a couple of things no for me they would have to completely rewrite the whole story you know because clearly they're not going along the lines of the original snow white film this is going to be a boss bitch film they need to get rid of rachel zegler for anybody to give this a chance so we're gonna have to wait and see what happens with this film will they change more things up who knows again i was really looking forward to seeing the teaser trailer which was rumored to be released because i wanted to review that one that would have been a video right but no we've got to wait a few months until that one what a shame
What a shame. But South Park, ladies and gentlemen, are always there. They're always ready to mock those who annoy everybody within society. Recently, as I'm sure most of you have seen, they decided to mock Prince Harry and Meghan's whole privacy gimmick. That was absolutely hilarious to see. And now they've released a new episode called Joining the Pandaverse, which, as I'm sure most of you can guess, is all about taking a laugh at all the pandering going on within society, especially Disney and their live action remakes, you know, recasting people and just token diversity as a whole within Hollywood. For example, South Park joining the Pandaverse first look sees Cartman afraid Disney will replace him with diverse women complaining about the patriarchy. Oh boy, but we have this clip going viral right now everywhere from the episode absolutely destroying Disney CEO Bob Iger, but especially Lucasfilm president Kathleen Kennedy. Now I'll try and put as much on your screen as I can without trying to get copyrighted. That is a task in itself, but sit back and enjoy. I decided I would show them. I would start making movies to fight all the bigotry in our society. But instead of doing any real work, I turned to the Panderstone. Soon I was using the Panderstone over and over again to try and fight all the ugly feedback. I used the Panderstone to the point that it became unstable. That's actually the best explanation I've heard as to why Disney movies are stuck now. I mean, only South Park right and you know to be honest it's great to see people outside of the social media world the youtube world saying it how it is because for whatever reason people within the mainstream media just ignore disney and their live action remakes and the token diversity but if you say you know men can't become women you're public enemy number one and they're talking about it everywhere but an actor who was fired from disney's mandalorian not so long ago gina carano for some controversial social media posts had this to say on x about kathleen kennedy and you can see why this is getting a lot of traction. This is the part where Kathleen Kennedy demands any YouTubers get censored off of YouTube for sharing and laughing at this hilarious episode. Well, that's going to be great for me, isn't it? She'll have YouTube disable the thumbs down option because of the ratio she'll receive. Then she'll have her publicist ghouls make sure Variety and Hollywood Reporter run hit pieces about the South Park creators and their families, smearing their names through every useful idiot she has under her thumb who would sell their soul to work for Lucasfilm. She'll activate her online mob to repeat that the South Park creators are racist. Big transphobes and demand that the South Park creators publicly apologize by only using the words she approves of and finally she'll demand they subject themselves to a re-education course of 45 people in the LGBTQ community zoom call to sit there and listen of how badly they got their feelings hurt all over a little boop of a South Park episode maybe just maybe the jig is up boy what a tweet right and she's not wrong about these companies these organizations you know when you speak out against the mainstream view they will try to emotionally break you in any way shape or form they can to make sure you conform with the current worldview you can't speak out against it right and that's why you should never do it never give these people power it's funny as well because these companies these people are always there you know they're there to virtue signal pander to certain groups of people yet as soon as they get criticized now nah, that's the worst thing on the planet right it's the biggest crime if you cannot take the criticism do not do the criticizing yourself it's just how it works so when i see people speaking out against these companies these people and episodes created by south park you have to applaud it because nobody else is doing it so we need somebody to do it. we need somebody with some balls to do something right otherwise these companies are just going to get away with it forever and speaking about those lovely buzzwords by the way diversity and inclusion on to our next story so the arsenal women's football team ladies and gentlemen i covered this a couple of days ago were branded too white yeah they were branded too white after their squad photo was released and there was no person of color it wasn't diverse enough it wasn't inclusive enough how dare you do such a thing how dare you blah, 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 as liberals and progressives always do so what these people want the club to do which they're pandering to this uh, south park got it completely right joining the pandaverse i guess they want the club to you know drop a couple of players signed a couple of players for the sake of diversity regardless of how talented the players are diversity over results and when you head in this direction your company your team will suffer because unless you're signing in this case the best players you're not going to do as well and i do apologize you know that all the players in the team that are good just so happen to be white and it's interesting, you know, as a football fan, because if there's a team full of diverse players, nobody cares. It's great. But as soon as there's a team of white players, then, you know, everybody's crying. So you can see there is a hidden agenda to this. It's not just about, you know, all the team is white. Oh, no, 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 no. There is clearly an agenda behind all of this. And it seems like the Arsenal Football Club are going down the woke direction of making sure diversity is at the forefront. Take a watch. Hello again. Now, Arsenal women posted this squad photo this week. What's missing? 
What do you think? There isn't a single person from a diverse background in the group. Now, the club has acknowledged the lack of diversity in the women's team and vowed to deliver greater diversity as a priority. Now, in a statement, Arsenal said, we acknowledge our current women's first team squad does not reflect the diversity that exists across the club and the communities we represent. Increasing participation among young women and girls from diverse backgrounds is a key priority for us at academy level, with specific measures in place to improve pathways and accessibility. Across all our teams, including our men's and women's academies, we're proud of our players from diverse backgrounds who've contributed to our history, success and culture. It's a priority for the club to continue to drive greater diversity and inclusion and create a sense of belonging for everyone connected to the club. Well, Arsenal's Jen Beattie is one of the players in this photo and she told the three players in the podcast that the club recognises the need for more representation in the first team. I think the club knows that it's not good enough not to have representation at, at, at the top level and at first team level. I think the men's team have that. A lot of men's, men's football has that, but in the women's game, it's not good enough and it's definitely not good enough for us at the minute either. You see the likes of Rach on the side of the Emirates, Anita Zante, top players that have been a huge part of our history of Arsenal. To, so to not have that at the minute is disappointing, but of course it has to happen at grassroots level. Our academies are, are definitely making steps towards that in terms of allowing sort of coaches and buses to come from inner city London up to Hertfordshire to allow girls to train as, as part of the academy to sort of make it more diverse, make it more inclusive and more accessible for everyone. But it has to happen at both levels. I know we've talked a lot about it from, from ETCs at that level, but representation for me is probably even more important at, at first team level. Yeah, I agree with you because at the end of the day, these kids... You know, if you're a young kid now and you're, 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 you're able to switch on the TV, you're able to, you know, look at magazines and you're able to find information about footballers. So you yeah. you want to have a role model that, that looks like you, yeah. that you can relate to in some sort of way. Well, the issue around a lack of diversity continues to be felt right across women's football. According to the PFA, just 9.7% of players in the elite women's game are from diverse ethnic backgrounds. Compare that to 43% of male players in the Premier League. Well, at last year's European Championship, England's settled starting 11 were all white and only three players in the squad were of mixed heritage. Nikita Paris, Jess Carter and Demi Stokes. Serena Wiegmann's squad for this year's World Cup had only two ethnically diverse players, Carter and Lauren James. The Chelsea manager, Emma Hayes, has called out the lack of diversity. She says it's a middle-class game. This is absolutely ridiculous to me. It really is. You know, the fact we have reached a point in this world where we have to put diversity on a higher pedestal than results, again, in a results-based industry. And as football fans, we all know the intensity around a club, the manager, when the results aren't going the right way. You can't force diversity right it's not the club's fault it's not football's fault that women in this country from diverse backgrounds aren't into football you can't force football onto them so naturally you will choose players who aren't as good just for diversity and when a club isn't getting the right results isn't winning that can cost people their jobs this is what we care about this is what this country cares about not the football being played on the pitch but who is playing the football and again if this is the other way around, and there's a team full of diverse players. Nobody cares, right? It's celebrated. Seals come out. But as soon as there's a team that may be full of white players, and they're chosen, by the way, because they're the most talented players, well, it's the biggest crime ever committed. How dare you do such a thing? It is not diverse enough. Just shut up. The club itself should be absolutely ashamed of bowing down to this whole garbage. They really should. And the players themselves were speaking out against this. By the way, you shouldn't be getting involved in this. You need to do what you're paid to do. Play the football and get the results. Nobody cared until something was made an issue out of it. You know, nobody cared until the headlines were out there. Now all these players are speaking out against it. Nah, it's just PR. Play the football on the pitch. Don't get involved. Because in my opinion, this whole diversity agenda is a disingenuous agenda. And the women that are speaking out against this might get replaced because of that diversity checkbox. I wonder how they would feel then. Probably not the best. But, you know, that's how the world wants it to be. And everybody must join the Pandaverse. It's great.
really is. But leave your thoughts down below, ladies and gentlemen, on all the topics that we discussed today. I would love to know your feelings on everything. If you have enjoyed, please make sure to leave a like rating because it really, really helps out the video. If you're new, hit that subscribe button and turn on bell notifications so you never miss a video. Share this video. But until next time, until tomorrow, it has been your boy JD. Have a great day. Stay safe. And I'm out. Peace.